from this point to this point it is one cycle it is turning on for very little time and then it is remaining off now I am going to connect a 120 ohm load at 3.3 volt you can see it increased its switching and the voltage 12.3 volt with no load when I will connect load the VCC voltage are increased so this IC will know how much the voltage are at VCC pin these voltage will determine the output current flowing in the secondary if you find these voltage at this capacitor that means this capacitor is good this circuit is good the second thing these voltage must be stable str we can say these are biasing voltage for initial start 6 7 8 are drain pins so it will start switching at 120 kilohertz assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh welcome to c electronics friends in this video i will discuss circuit design of this dh321 ic this is current mode smps controller this supply have multi output 3.3 5 volt and 25 volt although it is used in satellite receivers the same combination is also used in led tv sets different types actually my idea to share the details to share the circuits to get an idea how a circuit works when we know the circuit combination the basics of the circuit we can take approach to any circuit even it is complicated or simple so let's start this SMPS controller it is basically current mode controller but it is also used in voltage mode so it controls the output voltage mode and current mode normally it is DH321 it is 120 kilohertz oscillator its frequency is 120 kilohertz if it is DL321 that is 60 kilohertz DH the word H and L pin out is same but just only the frequency switching frequency is different FSDH321 that is 120 kilohertz and DL321 the number is same just only the difference is H and L so it will oscillate at 60 kilohertz pin number one of this IC is always ground pin number two is VCC pin pin number three is feedback pin number four is I sense that means current sense pin number five is VSTR pin number six seven eight are drain pin if we come to this point 250 volt are applied at input terminal at this point then we have dual line filter after that we have bridge rectifier four diodes one two three four and after these rectifiers we have bulk capacitor this capacitor one and one end is grounded this end is grounded and this is positive end positive end is going directly to two transformer out transformer primary so positive end is going directly to transformer primary we have two components in the same same line after that these are here one and two it is resistor and a capacitor then it have a series diode it is called RCD resistor capacitor and diode snubber circuit it is used to protect primary winding and the driving MOSFET of this IC from over voltage stress in the off period the voltage rectified voltage when it is here 220 volt here we will find 310 volt 312 volt DC DC voltage are applied here and 100k resistor to give startup voltage STR voltage to give chip biasing to this IC because initially this IC is off now these voltage will be applied to pin number 5 
So pin number 5 will force this IC to start. Pin number 1 is grounded to the main capacitor ground and pin number 6, 7, 8 are drain pins. So drain pins, STR, we can say these are biasing voltage for initial start. 6, 7, 8 are drain pins. So it will start switching at 120 kilohertz. This ground will be switched through this inductor. This is a as a current protection. Where is the inductor? The inductor is here. This resistor, 100K resistor is connected, this positive line and this resistor is connected at this point. This IC, pin number 5, VSTR. 6, 7, 8 are connected to this point and from this point to this point it is inductor, coil. It is just only a jumper. This one, it is a jumper. L12 and this is primary winding from this point to this point. Here we have positive voltage. So this IC will start switching and it will adjust its duty cycle. When it will start switching, same time there is a feedback winding, VCC winding, auxiliary winding, bias winding, what is soever we call the voltage will be induced in this winding and in secondaries. This transformer it have three secondaries and one auxiliary winding so it have four windings. Auxiliary winding is basically used to apply VCC voltage for smooth running of this IC. These voltage are for startup and when the IC takes a start after that these voltage are used to bias the IC. Now we take voltage and output section we have rectifier inductor capacitor filter network and we will take 25 volt from this winding the second winding we have diode recovery resistor protection resistor from spikes capacitor inductor 5 volt output we have two lines in for 5 volt then we have third winding that is 3.3 volt this voltage will pass to this capacitor, inductor, capacitor and we will take 3.3 volt in the output section. Now the voltage started, this IC started switching from here to here it is one cycle. So it will start switching, we will receive voltage in the output section. The same time this capacitor will start charging. When it will reach at 3.3 volt, this line we have 22 ohm resistor and this optocoupler, pin number 1, voltage will reach here. And after this capacitor, before inductor and after this inductor, we take this voltage, voltage divider network 1.9k and 5.6k, these two resistors are used to give a reference voltage for TL431. TL431 that is adjustable Zener reference. When we will receive 3.3 volt here, this voltage divider network will cause to apply voltage, divide voltage at this point 2.5 volt. When, when this TL431 will take 2.5 volt at pin number 1, at that time it will give a drive signal it will give output. So basically what is the function of this uh, TL431? It gives a offset from this ground level. At that time it will allow to flow the current in this optocoupler. So this optocoupler will start switching. The light will pass to the phototransistor. Inside there is a phototransistor. The base of this transistor is optical window that have optical window so this transistor will switch and its internal resistance will decrease so it will cause to flow this ground line to pin number 3 of this IC. Pin number 3 of this IC is feedback. At that time this IC will become to know that the voltage at the output stage are 
stable. The required voltage are achieved so that this IC will set its duty cycle at that level. When there is a load on the output, what will happen? The voltage will drop on this capacitor. When there will a voltage drop at that time, this optocoupler will go in off state or near to off state because that time this capacitor will first it is charging and it have very low low discharge then charge low discharge but when we connect a load so it will charge and it will discharge rapidly because load load is connected so it will charge discharge its ripples will increase where before this inductor this inductor will make smooth line but these ripples will apply it to this PC817 optocoupler so this optocoupler will translate this varying ripples to the base of this transistor and these varying ripples this varying signal will apply to this feedback pin so this feedback pin will take these ripples and it will find how much the voltage drop is occurring in the output area. The same time when there is a voltage drop so it will increase its duty cycle on time vs off time in the cycle. In first cycle, in first condition with no load its duty cycle was less. Now this IC increased its switching time, the switch closing time in to apply more current for the primary. First it was switching for less time in a cycle, in the portion of the cycle every hertz it's, it was switching for less period and more time it was remaining off but now it is turning on more time after that switching off for less time so that the more current will pass when more current will pass it will cause to increase the output voltage why because this capacitor is discharging rapidly to replenish the charge the voltage level in this capacitor it will increase the duty cycle meanwhile this winding also cause to increase voltage for the VCC pin. Every IC it have a standard voltage level for VCC pin. For example this IC will work from 9 volt it is example 9 volt to 13 volt. If in this VCC pin it takes 8 volt it is called UVLO under voltage lockout and if it will take 15 volt 16 volt that is called overload protection if it is working between this limit this range so it will work safe 9 volt 13 volt safe less than 9 volt under voltage lockout so this IC will turn off and in overload overload protection OLP above this limit it will go in this condition so it will turn off switching some ICs have switching for in different modes startup mode that is called soft start startup mode running mode burst mode and reboot mode or restart mode these are different conditions for these ICs to make protection it have over temperature protection, over voltage protection, over current protection. Then there is pin number 4. A resistor can be connected at this pin that is connected after calculation. If we calculate, so it will limit the maximum current. How much we maximum current need from this circuit that can be limited from this point at pin number 4. If we connect a resistor between 4 and ground that time this will limit 
its current at specific level so that this circuit will not go in over current condition so let's power on first of all if you have no good experience in dealing with electronic circuits power electronics never do practical or uh, never attempt to repair these circuits and now i will demonstrate discuss the faults and checkpoints for this circuit always use isolation transformer always use series lamp keep yourself insulated and never touch any component in high side area this is high side hot side input side and this is low side cold side there is a separation between low side and high side this is high side where we connect the main input voltage and from where we take output that is called low side so this is low side and this is high side high side your hot side that have its separate ground that is called primary ground and the secondary ground that is in output for testing any circuit set multimeter to ac voltage first of all you have to troubleshoot you have to check the input voltage ac and connect voltage at input terminal it is 234 volt that's nice after that we have to check the voltage from this point to this point here is inductor dual line filter check input side after that check output side it's okay after that we have this bridge rectifier after this inductor we have this bridge rectifier the output of this bridge rectifier will reach at the bulk capacitor at main capacitor this one so the voltage at capacitor will DC voltage to check DC voltage set multimeter to DC and connect both lines to the capacitor it is 334 volt if you want to check the voltage here it is 235 volt multiply 235 volt with 1.414 and if the calculated value is here at this capacitor that means this capacitor is good bridge is good our bridge rectifier is working good so the stored voltage must be ac voltage how much is ac input if you have 180 volt multiply it with 1.414 and your calculated voltage will appear at this capacitor if you find these voltage at this capacitor that means this capacitor is good this circuit is good the second thing these voltage must be stable if you look at meter readout it is 334 volt if it is jumping for example if these voltage are moving from 310 volt to 330 340 volt then back 310 these are increasing decreasing fluctuation if we have fluctuation that means our circuit have problem after this point you have to check the voltage at this capacitor this is called vcc capacitor set multimeter to dc and connect multimeter across this capacitor it is 12.42 volt this is without load as i discussed when this ic will start switching at normal condition its duty cycle is low so that means the output will low at standard rate when there is a voltage drop at this point so it will ask to increase the switching when it will increase its duty cycle that time the flow of current in the primary will increase because this ic will allow to flow the current for more time so magnetic field will increase so this increased magnetic field will cause to increase the voltage to compensate the load compensation and at the same time these voltage will also increase in this 
winding so that this IC will know that how much the current level is flowing in the output side. Now I connected one pair of wires in the output section to monitor the voltage and to connect the load and this point to monitor the VCC voltage as I discussed when we will increase the load at that time the VCC voltage will increase and the IC will increase the switching so I will connect across the IC switch to check the turn off and turn on of this IC now I connected oscilloscope at the IC switch at the drive stage of the transformer prime rewinding and this end is ground so I connected oscilloscope between these two points how much time it will switch on and switch off this switch internal switch so I connected across the switch or we can connect across the winding and I will monitor the VCC capacitor voltage which we discussed these are 12 volt now I am going to apply power now we can see with no load now there is no load this point multimeter is connected to this point from this point to this point it is one cycle it is turning on for very little time and then it is remaining off now I am going to connect a 120 ohm load at 3.3 volt you can see it increased its switching and the voltage 12.3 volt with no load when I will connect load the VCC voltage are increased so this IC will know how much the voltage are at VCC pin these voltage will determine the output current flowing in the secondary now I will increase the load it was 121 ohm and now I am connecting 1.5 it is 1 or 50 1.5 ohm it is I will put this IC in over current condition we can see in over current condition there is fluctuation so that this IC is going over voltage condition and lockout condition and it is trying to restart after a long time so we have fluctuation in the output and output voltage are trying to increase but there is short circuit the same time the optocoupler will give feedback that there is short circuit and the VCC winding this VCC winding at this capacitor is taking this IC into overload condition when overload condition this IC will turn off when this will reach back again at 8 volt that time this IC will start again when it will try to start it try to start that time it tried full switching and it will take maximum voltage and it will go overload protection so now I removed overload now this IC started switching at its standard level now it is switching and we take we are taking 12 volt that means it is no load when the load will increase the VCC voltage will increase so IC will know that there is current flowing what is the amount of current flowing in the secondary now we will monitor the ripples in the feedback these are the ripples the charging discharging time of the capacitor when we will increase the load we can see I increase the load at that time the ripples increased we have increased level of ripples 
when there was no load low ripples but when we connect load when i will connect load you can see the ripples increased so the ripple level is increased now at tl431 2.48 volt at pin number 1 when it will take 2.48 2.5 volt at that time it will allow to flow the current in this input side so it will apply 1 volt in the input side of the optocoupler friends i hope so this video is informative for you if you learned something hit the like button if you want and if you have any question let me know in the comment box and if it is informative for you share with your friends your circles so that maybe someone can take benefit from this tutorial if you have any suggestion please uh, let me know in the comment box and if there is something wrong in the video please inform me for correction i will thankful stay blessed take care assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh